Today we're diving into a day in the life of a CI lesson. From interactive warm-ups to personalized stories, join me in uncovering the secrets of teaching that's not just effective, but truly transformative. Stay tuned because you're about to see language instruction in a whole new light. My name is Scott and you're watching Immediate Immersion, where we're all about comprehension-based instruction in the modern language classroom. We'll be right back. Starting class with an activity as soon as students walk in really sets the stage for the entire period. These initial activities are crucial for transitioning students from their native language mindset into the target language zone, creating an immersive language environment right off the bat. I have four go-to activities that I use as warm-ups for my students. First, I found that silent reading can be a game changer in this regard. It's a calm, effective way to ease students into the language, and it caters to different levels since they can choose materials that match their comfort. This not only fosters individual language processing, but also helps in building a habit of independent learning. Another great activity is interactive tools like Kahoot, Gimkit, or Blukit. They really spice up the start of class, providing a dynamic way for students to review and apply what they've learned. These platforms are fantastic for peer interaction and healthy competition, getting the energy up and students genuinely excited about class. It's learning disguised as play, and who doesn't love that? Similar to interactive games, quick practice quizzes as a starter activity can also be really effective. They're like a rapid fire test of what students remember from previous lessons keeping their knowledge fresh. Mixing up the quiz formats keeps students on their toes and ready to tackle varied language challenges. On Fridays, I like to start with reflection questions. Reflection questions are important to provide insights into students' learning and classroom activities. They encourage students to think critically about what they've learned and how they're applying it. They also give me a glimpse into their thought processes, helping in tailoring future lessons to better meet their needs and interests. These start of class activities are more than just warm ups, they're tone setters. They create a focused yet relaxed atmosphere where language learning is the main event. And when students have something engaging to do right away, it minimizes distractions and sets a productive rhythm for the rest of the class. Hit that like button if you got a new idea for a warm-up activity that you hadn't thought of before. Incorporating songs into the language classroom can be a fantastic way to enhance learning. They're not just a tool for teaching vocabulary, grammar, and culture, but also serve as a fun, energizing break for students. The key, of course, is selecting the right song that aligns with your learning goals and is appropriate for your students' proficiency level and age. When you pick a song, you're aiming to find that sweet spot where the language used is challenging enough to be educational, but not so difficult that it becomes discouraging. Songs are a treasure trove for vocabulary acquisition and grammar practice, and they often naturally embody the cultural nuances of the language. Plus, the repetitive nature of the music helps in solidifying these new words and structures in students' minds. I like to focus on one song for about two weeks. This duration allows students to familiarize themselves with the lyrics and melody, making the learning process more effective. Initially, introducing the song through a close activity is a great way to get them engaged in the song. They listen and fill in missing words or phrases, which is excellent for honing their listening skills. Providing a translation also helps in understanding the context and cultural significance of the lyrics. And then to wrap up the song learning, why not make it exciting with a bit of friendly competition? Dividing the class into two teams for a song competition, where they compete on who sings the loudest, can be a thrilling experience. It's a bit of a ask for forgiveness, not permission scenario, but it's all in good fun and an effective learning tool. This approach not only reinforces the language, but also boosts their confidence in using it. A word of caution though, 
When choosing songs, especially popular radio tunes, it's important to ensure there's no inappropriate subtext in the lyrics. What's popular isn't always classroom appropriate. If you've ever made that mistake, smash that like button so I know that I'm not the only one. Now lastly, using lyric videos from YouTube can really enhance this activity. It's like having a karaoke session in the classroom where students can follow along with the lyrics on screen. It's interactive, engaging, and allows students to connect words with their pronunciation and rhythm in a memorable way. Incorporating songs in this manner not only aids language learning, but also brings a lively, enjoyable atmosphere to the classroom. It's a creative way to bridge the gap between formal language instruction and the real living language that students are eager to grasp. Introducing new vocabulary in a CI lesson can be a dynamic and interactive process. I like to start by using images or videos that illustrate the meaning of the new vocabulary items. This visual context not only aids in understanding, but also makes the learning experience more engaging and memorable. For instance, showing a short clip or an image of a mercado market instantly gives students a visual anchor for the word, making it more than just a string of letters. Additionally, placing vocabulary in contextual sentences is crucial. It's one thing to know a word, but understanding how to use it in real life is where the true learning happens. When students see a new word used in a sentence, they get a sense of its practical application, its nuances, and how it interacts with other words. This approach moves vocabulary learning from rote memorization to practical language use. Another strategy I find invaluable is assigning actions or gestures to vocabulary items using total physical response techniques. For example, if you're teaching the word corre, he or she runs, you might use a running motion. This kinesthetic connection helps students internalize the vocabulary, making it easier to recall. Plus, it adds an element of fun and movement to the class, which is always a plus. And then there's the spontaneous vocabulary that emerges naturally during lessons. Whenever an unknown word comes up, I write it on the board along with its definition. I like to use one color for the vocabulary item and a different color for the definition. This consistency helps students quickly identify what's important and where to focus their attention. It's a simple yet effective way to keep the class organized and ensure that these impromptu learning moments aren't lost. By combining these techniques, visual aids, contextual sentences, actions, and writing new vocabulary on the board, we create a rich, multi-dimensional approach to vocabulary learning. It's about making each new word a tangible, usable part of the student's language repertoire, not just another item on a list to memorize. This way, vocabulary learning becomes a lively, integral part of the language acquisition journey. The main content of a CI lesson unfolds over about two weeks, offering a deep and engaging exploration of the language. After introducing new vocabulary, I use it as a foundation to develop conversations with students. This isn't about drilling vocabulary though. Rather, it's about getting to know the students through the target language using that vocabulary. On any given week, I'll focus on just two or three students. And this approach allows for a more personalized and meaningful interaction where the language serves as a bridge to understanding each student's unique experiences and interests. The first part of the lesson is asking a story, which could be done through picture talk, movie talk, or as a collaborative story with actors. This method is fantastic for bringing vocabulary to life. It's not just about memorizing words, it's about seeing them in action in a narrative context that's engaging and often quite fun. Whether it's discussing a series of pictures or creating a story together, these activities help students see the language as a living, breathing entity. In the second week, the focus shifts to reading a story. I write a story using the same vocabulary from the lesson, but weave it into a different narrative, often involving the students in my class. This personalized touch not only makes the story more relatable, but also reinforces the vocabulary in a new and interesting context. 
It's a way to show the versatility of language and how it can be adapted to various scenarios. Throughout these activities, whether it's a conversation day, asking a story, or reading a text, I constantly ask questions to keep the students engaged and gauge their level of comprehension. This ongoing interaction is key in a CI lesson. It's not just about the students absorbing information, it's about them actively participating, responding, and showing their understanding of the language in real time. This method ensures that the lesson is not a passive experience, but an active journey through the language, where every step is an opportunity for deeper comprehension and connection. Curious about your grasp of comprehension-based instruction techniques? Take a moment to check out our CI proficiency quiz. It's a quick, insightful way to gauge your understanding and see where you stand in the world of CI teaching. Go to mm.us slash CI quiz or click the link in the description below to start your quiz now and take the next step in mastering comprehensible input. Exit tickets are such a crucial part of the learning process in a language classroom. They're like a snapshot of what students are taking away from the day's lesson. Whether it's through handwritten slips, answers on a Google form, or video recordings on apps like flip.com, the format can vary, but the essence remains the same, understanding our students' learning journey. I find that these exit tickets are incredibly insightful. They offer a direct window into the students' minds, showing us what resonated with them, what might need more clarification, and how they're connecting with the material. It's a bit like having a conversation with each student at the end of class, where they share their reflections, questions, and even suggestions. The questions on the exit tickets can be as varied as the students themselves. Asking things like, what are three things you learned today? Or tell me three things that you remember from today's story helps in assessing their retention and understanding. It's fascinating to see what sticks with them. Sometimes it's most unexpected part of the lesson. Then there are questions like, what surprised you today in class? Or do you have any questions about today's lesson? These invite students to engage more critically with the material, to reflect on their own learning process, and to voice any uncertainties or curiosities they might have. I also like to ask about their comfort and challenges in class. Questions like, are you having any difficulties in class? Help in identifying any barriers they might be facing and allow us to address these in subsequent lessons. And of course, there's room for creativity and student input. Asking something like, if you could change today's story, what would you change and why? Not only sparks their imagination, but also gives them a sense of ownership in the learning process. It's amazing how such a simple question can yield such diverse, insightful responses. In essence, exit tickets are not just a tool for assessment, they're a communication channel that helps in shaping the trajectory of our lessons. They ensure that we're meeting our students where they are and guiding them forward in a way that resonates with their individual learning paths. The possibilities with exit tickets are indeed endless, and they're a testament to the dynamic, responsive nature of comprehension-based instruction. Do you follow the same sequence of activities? If not, let me know what you do differently in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you're curious to explore more about this innovative approach to language teaching, check out one of the two videos appearing on your screen. They're packed with insights and strategies to enrich your language teaching experience. Thank you for watching, and until next time, happy comprehensible input.